All right, so the wait is finally over, and what we're looking at here today is going to be the DJI 04 Pro Air unit that everybody is waiting for. I don't know about you, but at least for me, I am super excited. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to connect the DJI 04 Pro Air unit to the Goggles 2, and also assume that it's going to work for the Integra as well. As for the Goggles 3, I do not have one at the moment, and I assume that most of us are still going to be using the old equipment, so probably that's going to be another video. All right, and in addition, we are also going to be installing the over air unit to the existing drone that we have. So we will be using the Synlock 20 that was sitting on the bench that was originally configurator for the Cadex Vistas. So it's going to fit the O4 Pro, just not going to be perfectly at the moment because nothing has been updated just yet. All right, so at the end, we're also going to be doing some test flight together and I will share some of my initial thoughts about the O4 system. All right, without further ado, let's get going. All right, so let's start by binding the air unit to the goggles too. So at least for the current moment, you are required to flash both devices to the latest firmware in order for them to bind. Currently, they do not support each other at the moment. All right, but if you have the goggles 3, probably you're going to be fine just by hitting the buy button. All right, so let's actually start by flashing the goggles first because I think it's a little bit more easier compared to the air unit. So what you're going to do, you're going to bring out your cell phone or you can always go to the computer and just flash by DJI Consumer app too, but I think cell phone is just a little bit easier and just avoids a lot of hassle. You are required to power up your goggles, so basically plug in the battery. Okay, let's put the battery over there. And then plug in a USB-C cable via the only USB-C port that is on the goggles too. Okay. And then the other side goes to our cell phone. So, okay, so once everything has been connected, you're going to launch the DJI Fly app. You're going to see that there is going to be a new firmware popping out. And this is going to be the most easiest way to update the goggles instead of connecting to the computer. We're just going to hit download right here. So if you are actually doing it the first time, it's actually going to ask you to see if you wanted to select device to connect to in order to flash it. You're just going to say cancel because otherwise it's going to force you to connect to a DJI Avatar 2 or like a Mini 3 Pro. And that's something that we don't want it to do. So we're just basically going to be waiting the download to be complete and the flashing to be completed. Okay, so during the installation process, if you're interested to know like what is actually installing, you can just go in, hit more, and you can see that we are, it's going to be adding the support to use DJI Goggles 04, a DJI 04 Air Unit and 04 Air Unit Pro, Light Air Unit and 04 Pro to be able to use with the Goggles too. I don't know if this actually will work with the Integra, but hey, I don't know. I hope that the Goggles 2 and the Integra is going to be the same firmware, but yeah, we'll find out soon. At least for now, this is we know that Goggles 2 is definitely going to be working with it. Let's just wait until this flashing to be complete. All right, so the flashing from the Goggles side is now complete. Now let's let actually swap to the air unit. We're going to flash it via the computer. Okay, so to flash the firmware of the O4 Pro air unit, we're actually going to be coming to our PC. And on our PC, let's actually switch the view to computer so you know what you have to do. So you have to download the DJI Assistant 2 Consumer Drone Series. And you wanted to make sure you download the newest version. The older version is not going to work. Make sure you download the newest one and install it. So once you install it, you are going to launch the DJI Assistant uh, Consumer Drone Series. And you will be required to plug in your O4 Air unit. So with a USB-C cable. Okay, so once the device has been detected, you're just going to connect it. And then you can see that there is going to be a newer firmware, which is going to be the one ending in 100. And the one that we have ends in like 000. So you wanted the one to be at 100 in order for it to work with your goggles too, because you can see that this is what it says. So you're just going to hit upgrade. So... Okay, so once you see the update complete, we will be able to just close this. You can see that this is right now at 100. Okay, let's just close everything. And you can just unplug the air unit right now. All right, so we're switching back to our bench. We're going to install this to our quad right now so we can test to see if we can bind it. All right, so first thing first, just to make my life a little bit easier, potentially in for future, we're just going to be inserting the SD card in here already because... If I just install it to this frame, I have to remove everything again to just put the SD card in. All right, so 
So this is going to be the bottom plate of the sin lock. So basically you can see that the mounting mechanism is just going to be like this. So what we have to do, you can see that right now the 04 air unit is much better compared to 03 because it does have a lot of mounting holes. So you will be able to just mount it directly without having to do a lot of TPU, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's just decide like which side is going to be better for us. So there is a little cutout right here. I don't think it's going to help us that much for us to access the stuff so we're just going to demand it like that okay so before we do it we have to think about the antennas in order to get our antenna properly mounted this is going to be the original tpu that we have you can see that we have two little small little holes right here so we're just going to be utilizing these two it's not going to fit perfectly but it will fit so to replace the antenna you do have to open up in the entire cage of it Okay, so when you're opening this, just make sure you are super careful. There's going to be a ribbon cable, which you do not want to bend or accidentally remove. But even if you remove that, I think it's okay to just plug it back in. But just, I don't want it to do actual works, right? So you can see that the antenna is going to be right here. It's going to be removing it like this. Okay. We'll be inserting in into this thing. Okay, you can see that it's going to fit a little bit, but just not perfect. But yeah, whatever it is, whatever right now. Okay, it's going to pop out. So probably have to do a little bit extra force to push it in. Okay. Right, just to hold it there, it should be good enough for now. We're going to insert the second one. This one's going to be harder because, yeah, when you have like one that is already in, it's going to be harder. Okay, this is going to be good for now. At least it's not moving. Let's actually put it back. Okay, then we can close it, make sure that everything is still connected. Let's actually put it back. All right, so next we will be mounting the air unit on top of this plate. So as you can see that we have so many holes right here, so it's gonna be easy in a sense for us to like just mount it. Just choose one you like. There's so many hole compared to the O3 air unit, that's nothing at all. Okay, so we're gonna be using these M2 five meter meter screws. So you can see that you should be able to fit it in like this. Okay, I'm just put it here. very good next we're going to bring out this little cable that is coming with the package so this is going to be a package that should be working with most of the quads right now particularly this taker fc is going to be working so all you needed to do is to plug it in just like that let's see this should be the correct location let's look at the manual so currently at least for the 04 i don't see that they're marking the little like what is what on the little pads so we're going to have to look at this so we we know that the far left is going to be the vcc ground rx and tx so we are not going to be using the s bus in the ground for this one because we're still using our express OS receivers so let's see so a thing that we want to pay attention is that rx tx is still going to be required to be reversed when you're connecting to the flight controller so, so for the over system on at least for right now the wire diagram the white cable is going to be our rx and the gray cable is going to be your tx and my flight controller is just reverse already so i don't have to like rearrange this cable so just make sure when you're plugging it in you want it to make sure that they are reverse on the other side okay so we can just twist the cable just a little bit so it's kind of like more sturdy in a sense Okay, and then you can see that there is going to be our little plug right there. I don't know if you can see it. The plug is right here. Okay, and we're just going to plug it in directly. Okay, it's going to be a little bit harder to access this, but yeah. Once you get it, you get it. Or the worst scenario, just remove everything and plug it in. 
All right, so we're basically going to be mounting the camera like that. You can see that it is not going to be perfect looking because, yeah. Yep, because of where the screw is at at the moment, it's just going to not be okay. And it's kind of like hitting the side a little bit. So I don't know if this is going to give us like a jitter footage later. So what I'm going to do is probably going to remove this top plate because you can see that it's kind of like hitting it. But and also we're not as we're not going to be using like an action camera most likely I think it's okay to for us to just kind of like remove this entire piece on the top okay so now let's actually just start putting everything the rest of the things back so let's start getting the antenna mount first uh oh oh that's the correct side yes okay so to get the antenna mount there's going to be a little clip mechanism that you have to go in order to kind of lock it so this is not going to be it, it's not the perfect mount for it you can see that the antenna is like going that way so <laughs> yeah okay let's actually start screwing stuff in so it can be secured so this is going to be the one that we wanted to get in I don't know if this is going to degenerate some kind of interference, but since like 5.7 and 2.4, maybe it's okay? I don't know. Okay, we're going to be removing this top plate, so squeeze it. Okay, so yeah, much lighter looking and yeah, much freer movements. Okay, it's gonna do yeah, I think it's this should be okay. Alright, so right now the build has been completed. However, just before we actually bite it, we still have to go to the computer because we have to activate the air unit, otherwise it's not gonna let you use it. Alright, so let's switch to the computer view. Alright, so you're going to plug in the USB-C cable into the air unit directly and good thing that this frame will allow you to plug it in without having to remove anything. So very, very nice. Let's switch to the computer screen. So at the computer side, you're going to plug in the drone, obviously, and then you're going to launch DJ Assistant 2. And once the system is connected, let's just wait for a second. You're going to launch air unit, you're going to hit activate, you're going to punch in your email, and you're going to just hit activate. And once you see that icon, Basically, that's an indication that it's done already. So we will be able to switch it back to our bench. We can finally bind this together. Let's get going. Okay, so we're finally coming back to the bench and we are finally going to give this a quick bind. So what we have to do at the goggle side is we're actually just going to be powered in on. So once you have flashed to the newest firmware, there's going to be an option for you to select DJI goggles, uh, DJI Air Unit 04 Pro and 04 Air Unit Lite. So you have to select the Air 04 Air Unit Pro in the switch. So what you have to do is you're going to go to status, you're going to go to switch, and then you are going to switch all the way down to the DJI 04 Pro Air Unit or the Air Unit Lite. That's basically going to be the step that you have to do. All right. So once you have that done, let's actually power this thing on. Okay. So to power this thing on, you are going to plug it in like this. And then there is going to be a buy button that you are required to hit. You're going to take out a little tweezer. And you're going to find a place that actually says bind. So there's going to be a bind button that you're going to hit right here. You won't be able to miss it. So the goal is just to press it. So it started to give you like this kind of little red streaks, like blowing. And then you're going to hit the bind button at the goggles right here. Okay, so once you hear that sound, it's an indication that it has been bounded. Let's just take a look at the goggles. All right, so we are getting footages. Let's see, let's move the quad. Okay. All right, so we will be able to get this to our front yard. Let's go give it a quick test flight. All right, so we're switching the scene to my front yard, and we will be test flying this DJI over air unit for the first time. You can see that this is not a perfect mount just yet. This is kind of like using whatever I had, and this is the only frame that probably will fit and is small enough. All right, I'm just going to plug this in with the battery and let's give it a go. 
So the footage you're seeing right now is recorded in the SD card and at 4K 60 frames per second. And it is in D Lock M and I also done some color grading. So otherwise it's going to be very washed out. So, and I also stabilized it in Gyro Flow. Since I only have the O4 Pro at the moment, my thoughts in this video are just going to be based on the O4 Pro. And we will not be discussing the O4 Lite just yet. So what we can see that the footage quality, I would say is a significant improvement compared to the O3 system. It has a lot more dynamic range and it's definitely something you can use as a main camera to replace an action camera. While the action camera might still have a slightly better quality, you're now saving tons of weight, which is a big plus for FPV drone. Your performance will increase, you'll get more flight time, and you'll be able to set up smaller, like basically the form factor, easier to travel. Given this, I think that we're going to see a lot more smaller and lighter quads being developed in 2025 by manufacturers. If this happens, it will be very beneficial for the FPV hobby, as smaller quads are generally easier to carry around, attracts less attention, and most importantly, eliminates the time-consuming GoPro setup. You just don't need to mount and set up the GoPro, adjust the camera angle, adjust your GoPro separately, and make sure that you press record when you take off, So, which can just add a lot of stress to you when you're just on a job or you just wanted to film something. So another question is, since I'm still mainly flying Vistas, and since the O4 Pro is just so good, would I be replacing all my existing quads to O4 Pro? The answer is no, mainly because I don't have the money to do a big swap. However, I will set up the O4 Pro system very strategically for quads that is mainly for filming purpose only. So small, lightweight, high performance, and high image quality will be my main goal. I will most likely be setting up a 2-inch Cinewhoop and a 3-inch freestyle quad as a main filming gear. So basically, something that you can just travel, take it with you without having to bring a lot of bulky big backpack, you know, so something that you can probably put in your pocket. And I would say this should be enough for me, at least for my current setup. For the rest of the quads that I'm flying for fun, or if the project allows me to use a larger quad that can still carry a GoPro, and I'm not gonna use the FPV camera as my main camera, as long as I can see when I'm flying, I really just don't care the image quality in my goggles. Yeah, since like the main course is gonna be the action camera. However, I will probably upgrade to O3 system completely because for the existing O3 system, the prediction is that the price will be lower, at least in the used market. I will just probably slowly phase out the Vista air units and then start picking O3 as my main system. The O3 may not be as good as the O4 Pro, but it's still fairly good image quality and can be perfect use as a backup camera in case my GoPro footage doesn't work or whatsoever. Okay, so that's for Vista flyers. But if you are mainly flying O3 already, like your system is completely O3, you don't have any Vistas, I just don't see a significant reason to upgrade completely to O4 Pro. Probably just swap out the one or two quads that you're just used for filming. For general flying, at least for the goggles view in the goggles 2, I don't know about goggles 3, but for the goggles 2, the, the O4 and O3 footage are just both pretty good. And you probably will not notice a significant difference on the regular daylight flight. So consider the similar experience during flight. I just don't think it is worth it to spend an extra $50 to the qualities that you probably don't need. So, all right, so that's about my take for the O4 Pro system. This is super biased based on my personal use case. So if you have a different thought, just feel free, like tell me like in the comments, like what you're gonna use the O4 system for. Anyway, if you like what I'm doing, please ensure to like and subscribe. All right, bye for now.